Hello and welcome to Autotion Nanigans. How the devil are you? Have you had a good week? My name is John. Thank you very much for joining me for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. This week we're visiting Shropshire in Staffordshire to take a look at the Telford Motorway, also known as the M54. The M54 starts here at the Essington Interchange where it heads away from the M6 for 23 miles, offering a total of seven junctions. It was actually at the other end of the M54 where it started life, just outside of Wellington near Telford. In 1975, the Wellington Bypass opened and was going to be called the A5M. However, its name was changed to the M54 during its construction. The M54 was built to be as environmentally friendly as possible, with the majority of the motorway built in carved up countryside cuttings to reduce noise levels and also to hide the motorway from view. A total of eight nesting boxes were installed underneath the bridges to encourage swifts to nest there. An incredible effort and the result of all of this is it's a motorway. On with the show then, and our first stop is Portobello Tower, which you'll find on your right just as you join the M54 from the M6. Portobello Tower is a hexagonal embattled tower that was built to commemorate Admiral Vernon's capture of Portobello in 1739. It sits on the site of Hilton Park, which was passed over to the Vernon family in 1547. And it was the Vernon family that built Hilton Hall in the 18th century, which still stands today. The hall was sold in 1951, but that means the Vernon family had held on to it for over 400 years. And a tenuous link, but the company Tarmac used the hall as their headquarters between 1985 and 1999. As you go past Junction 1, on your right is the site of the former ROF Featherstone a Royal Ordnance factory that closed sometime in the mid-90s. The factory's been completely demolished now, but plans are underway to construct a large commercial site offering distribution, storage and industrial units. Of course, one of the problems raised with constructing this commercial site is the increase in traffic. Therefore, it's been proposed that a new link road should be built, joining up with a newly designed Junction 2 on the M54. However, I predict this is going to go a little bit pear-shaped because the developers are not looking to fund any of the surrounding infrastructure. At best, they're going to contribute towards it. And as it turns out, our motorway junctions are quite expensive. So there's going to be lengthy discussions and arguments between planners, councils and developers with probably not a lot happening as a result. That's my guess anyway. I reckon it won't be finished by 2024, which is when they say it's going to be completed. We'll see. If they did go ahead with redesigning Junction 2, it would actually be its third layout because Junction 2's already seen a few changes over the years. Allow me to explain. Junction 2 used to be a fairly simple and typical junction design. That is until Jaguar Land Rover came along and said, we want to build an engine production plant right next to the M54. Work started to build the factory in around 2006 and was finally completed in 2014. As part of its construction, Junction 2 was turned from a simple on-off motorway junction into this rather odd-looking design. It's at this factory that JLR manufactured the Ingenium family of engines. These engines are fitted to various models of Land Rovers, Range Rovers and Jaguars, and it seems JLR consistently score really badly when it comes to reliability. Don't take my word for it, JLR's CEO himself even admitted that the poor reliability had cost them quite a lot of customers. I can only hope that they've managed to improve this. Between junctions three and four is a site where they had intended to build the M54's one and only service station. The plan was to open the services at Lizard Hill, however, they didn't give it much priority, and by the time the motorway opened, nothing had happened. When the Department of Transport was approached by Lord Stafford about building a services at Castle Farm, they quickly turned their attention to that. The reason they did that is because when you have a landowner's consent, it's an awful lot easier to get things done, whereas the site at Lizard Hill would have still required permissions, etc. They started to plan the services at at Castle Farm in 1985, but it wasn't until 2003 that the services finally opened as Telford Services. And here we are, Telford Services, which is just off Junction 4. I visited Telford Services last year as part of our All the Motorway Service Station series. It's at Telford that we find an industrial steam hammer that's several feet high. It's also a good opportunity to get a coffee. Junction 5 is another junction that used to be very different from what it is now. When the first section of the M54 opened in 1975, it ran as far as Junction 5, which at the time was the eastern terminus for the M54 or the Wellington Bypass. It was called the Priors Lee Interchange, and today you might notice around Junction 5 these sort of double-sized hard shoulders. These are the remains of the slip roads that would have come off the motorway and joined up with the A5, or as it was known back then, the A4539. It was intended to keep the original junction design when extending the M54 up to Birmingham, but after requests were made from the local council, they built Junction 5 as we know it today. The reason for that is that the local council didn't think the original junction was suitable for the increasing level of traffic in the area. In April 2021, 
Parts of the eastbound carriageway and the entrance at Junction 6 to the M54 were closed for several days following a fire at a nearby recycling plant. But it seems they vacated the site in 2017, leaving it abandoned and also leaving vast quantities of waste materials behind. The fire involved large amounts of plastic waste and machinery, meaning the fumes emitted were slightly less than desirable. Residents were advised to keep their windows closed and several schools in the area were closed over concerns of air quality. Junction 6 is also known as the Ketley Dingle Interchange. It's here that the A5223 meets the M54 at this clearly oversized junction. This is the result of some plans and ideas that never happened. The intention was for the A5223 to be a dual carriageway with a flyover installed at the motorway junction. You can see where they've left space for this to be done. However, as I say, it never happened. If you follow the A5223 north from Junction 6, Six, you'll see where space has been left for additional carriageways and this continues all the way up to where the road meets the A442. Along the way it's no coincidence that a lot of the roundabouts seem to be larger than perhaps necessary. The idea behind all of this was to build a dual carriageway that would complement the A422 which runs to the east of Telford from Junction 5 of the M54. This would have given the town two main routes but of course only one of these, the A422, was actually ever completed and even then I'm not sure the 422 was finished as per the original plan. Junction is where we find the end of the M54 and from here it carries on to the A5. A short distance from Junction 7 is Leeton Quarry, a quite obvious blot on Google Maps but it probably looks quite cool with the drone so let's go check it out. Leeton Quarry opened as a family run business in the 1940s supplying the local area with hard rock aggregates. As the quarry developed they added an asphalt plant in the 1950s. Bigger and better plants followed in 1981 and 1991. In 2005 a concrete plant was added to the site allowing Leeton and quarry to offer a wide range of useful materials. And now as always on camera you won't get much sense for scale but this place is massive. You can't even see the bottom from where you are at the moment. Cruising through the universe having lots of fun Here comes Earth and Jimmy know that he's a mighty one. Look out! On your way to Junction 7 if you have a look out to your left you might notice a hill. It's called the Wreck Inn and it's a bit of a landmark here in Shropshire. It rises 400 metres from the ground and offers stunning views of the area. The Wreck Inn also gets a mention in Le Mans 66 or Ford versus Ferrari if you prefer. Early in the film, when Ken Miles wants to end the debate him and his wife are having over their financial situation, he says, I'm just quick going around the rig and it's over. This is a phrase that originates from the West Midlands of England and signifies that one should stop waffling and get to the point. The reckon is this very hill. What about that? Hollywood. As said, the views here are absolutely stunning and it tees me up nicely for an overly exuberant drone-based outro. But of course, before that, I have to say thank you very much for watching. I hope you liked the film. If you did, there is, of course, a button specifically for that. As a channel, we've been growing quite nicely as of late. Thank you very much for your support, guys. I really do appreciate it. I do still want to reach 100,000 subscribers if it's all possible. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. That'd be wicked sweet awesome. And that just leaves me to say enjoy the rest of your week, whatever it is you guys get up to. My name's John. You've been watching Auto Shenanigans and I'll see you guys next time for another exciting episode of Secrets of the Motorway. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.